Hola, mister. Hi, guys. Hi. Let me read, please. Isabela. A school day with a difference. Keep going. Number one. Hi, Sofia. Ter Aleski. That's how a student says hello to each other at Anna Hassan School in, fin in Finland. A student, uh, a student at, his, at the school called their teachers by the first name. Anna, sha Anna shouts more to her friends too. When she arrives at 7.45 in the morning, she, she's been a student there since first grade, so she knows everybody. Thank you. Number two, Daddy. Hello, Mita. Hello. Okay. Anna's school is different from most schools in Europe and the United States. First, Anna and her classmates decide along with their teacher what their weekly activities will be. Also, students work at their own pace and don't always do the same things. Some may be doing math and others might be doing something practical. This month, Anna has practical, practical cooking and making an amazing an magazine in different workshops. Practiced. Practiced. Number three. Sorella, number three. Anna and her classmates don't learn by memorizing facts. Working together and gathering information is more important in the system. They ask their teacher for help whenever they need it. And the students are generally very focused and active. Focused and active. And the teacher doesn't have to tell them to behave. Thank you. Victoria, number one. Number four. And weeks are important part of the day. After a double period, 90 minutes, students have a double 16 minute break. Teacher encourage students, encourage. encourage students to go out and get some fresh air, even if the worry is best. Being active makes students hungry. So lunch time is also very popular. It's Anna school students get free hot meals every day. Today's lunch lunch is everybody's favorite meatballs and mash mashed. Potatoes, seats served and tables with tablecloths and flower and flower seats in bases. Thank you. Jen number five. Okay. A charge <laughs> have always been part of the curriculum at Anna School. They include uh, taking care of plants. Uh, collecting trash, recycling, and composting. Um, Students also uh, help in the library and in the kitchen. Thank you. Para number six. Hmm? Para. Mm, 
What? What number? Six. Okay. Uh, school is over by two o'clock. Most parents work. So in the afternoon, the there are clubs and and hobby groups before students go home. Students can study Japanese, learn an instrument, and do arts gra and graphs. When Anna returns home in the evening, she's free to, to do what she likes because she har hardly ever has any homework. Okay. Let me turn these directions, Amy. Look at the statements, which statement describe your school. Choose and compare it with a partner. Okay, Amy, can you help me to read number one? We memorized a lot of facts. Sometimes that's running. Do you do that in your school, Amy? No. No? You don't memorize facts in your school? Yes. Sometimes they're boring? Yes. Okay. Number two, uh, Samantha. Sometimes we help to clean the class. Do you do that? No, we don't do that in my school. Okay. Number three, um, Jorge. The breaks are short, so we don't do much exercise. Did you join your school, Jorge? I don't know if we call it short, since I think I have like 35 minutes of a uh, break. So I would say no. No, okay. And number four, Isabella. We don't have much hunger, so I have a lot of free time. It's great. Is that during your school, Sarah? No, I have a lot of homework in my school. Okay. A lot. Okay. Like 10 in okay. one day. Daddy, what about number five? There's a lot of reading and writing. I like to learn something practical inside. Instead. Mm -hmm. Instead. Uh, yes. Is it true? Yes. Okay. And um, Victoria, number six. We we have exams and tests very often, so I have to study a lot. Uh, is it during uh, your school? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now what we gonna do? Can you help me to read the directions, Victoria? Read article quickly, match this D to paraphrase one six. Okay, because we have already read, we're gonna do it different. Okay, Michelle, go and read letter A. Okay, students can have bread and a glass of milk too. What paragraph is that? Um Number number four. Number four. Breaks are important for a school day after double period. What I mean, students have double thirty minute break. Teachers encourage students to go out, get some fresh air, even when the weather is bad. Being active makes students hungry, so lunchtime is also very popular. And school students get free meals every day. Today, lunch everybody favorite meatballs, mashed potatoes. Yeah, maybe. Okay, what about number two? Okay. 
And when in Finland being responsible and helping others is very important. What part do you say? It's One, two, three, four. Mm. Farah, can you help me? I joined a bit late. Um, sorry, Jorge, I don't know. Does anybody have an idea what Farah is? What is the question, mister? That's not a question. Just you have to match the sentence. sentence. Yeah. In Finland, being responsible and helping others is very important. Um, number three, I think. Three? Anna yeah. and her classmates don't learn memorize. Why? Why number three? It's mm -hmm. you. Page, mister. No, it's, this is not in the book. This is not in the book. Well, it is in a book, but it's a little bit different. Where? Samantha, can you help me? I don't know how he saw me. It's number five, Jorge. Can you read number five? Cars mm. and Charles have always been part of the curriculum at an school. They include taking care of plants, collecting trash, and recycling and composting. And composting. Students also help in the library and the kitchen. So being responsible and helping others. Okay. Number five, then. Yeah. Amy, go with number letter C. They don't follow the same program or have the same classes every week. Yeah, what number is that? Number two. Number two, yeah. Go ahead and read it. Anna's school is different from most schools in here in Europe and the United States. First, Anna and her classmates decide along with the teacher what their weekly activities will be. Also, students work at their own pace and pace. don't pace. pace and don't always do the same things. Some may be doing math and others might be doing something practical. This month, Anna has practiced cooking, cooking and making a magazine in different workshops. Thank you. And last one, Samantha. They often work in pairs or groups and share what they know. Is it number six? Hmm? Did you read? Number three, I think. Go ahead and read. Anna and her classmates don't learn by memorizing facts. Working together and gathering information is more important in this system. Mm -hmm. They ask their teacher to help whenever they need it. Students are generally very focused and active, and the teacher doesn't have to tell them to behave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's number three. Very good. Okay, tell me which one is, if it's true or false for you. Um, Father, number one. Uh, and it like to have fewer <laughs> subjects than we do now. Which one would you check? 
more subjects or less subjects? Fewer or more? 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 Why? So you say you have like fewer right now, like very few, so you want more. What about you, Jorge? Do you want more subjects in school? No. Or fewer? Fewer. Fewer. What about you, Daddy? Do you want more subjects? No. Do you understand the question? Yes. Does everybody understand the question? Yes. Okay. So maybe you have 10 subjects. You want more than that? No. No. So that means more homework, more exams, more, more study. I don't think it's, two, it's one more than that. Okay, what about no. number, number two, Victoria? I like to have more hours of school every day. I like to have fewer hours of school every day. What do you prefer, Victoria? To have more classes, more hours, or less hours, or fewer hours? Mm, fewer? Fewer hours? Okay. How many you have now? A day. Six, seven, five. I think that's six. Six. How many you want to have? One. One? No, that's <laughs> maybe four or five, but one is too little. Okay. Okay, and last one is going to be Jari. We should have more and longer breaks. I think we have enough break time. So what we do you should. think about your school, Jari? Do you think like you, you should have longer breaks? Or do you have or do you think you have enough? No, longer. What did you say? She said longer. We have... Longer? Yes. yes. To do what, Jari? What? To do what? Why do you need longer breaks? To do what? For playing. I know. Playing? I know, yeah. I know. Because, because literally, to, to eat, you just have like. To eat it, to play, to. To eat, you can play a lot of time because you have to eat. And there's a person that eat. Well, so you need you need a long break in school because you go to school to play, right? No, and it because I can't finish eating. So how long is your break, Isabella? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you need a longer break. I think five minutes is too little. I think thirty minutes is okay. What do you say, Jorge? Thirty minutes is fine. I have the same problem about ordering food. Uh, uh, between the time that I ordered it and I ate it, there has been already like, I don't know, 25 minutes. How question, do you, do you bring lunch to, to school? No. Or do you need to go to a place and buy it? We need to go to a place and buy it. Why do you do that? Because it's you have to only... spend, you spend money, uh, you, ha you have to waste time, money, and you don't know if it's clean or not. You might get Oh, no. It's in, it's in our school. Yeah, I think it's better if you make your lunch home. You can prepare something. I don't, I don't even know if, if they allow you to bring lunch. Is there a problem if you bring lunch to school? I don't know, but nobody has done it. I think, like... Yeah, it's not very popular, right? Bringing lunch to school. 
Maybe it's more yeah. popular go and buy a Pepsi and a Dorito to the grocery store. Yes. But that's not very good for you. I mean, like Doritos and Pepsi are not very good for you. So. I'm very, it's very sad. Yeah. No, I understand. I understand. Like, you want to be popular in school. You don't want other kids making fun of you because you're bringing an empanada with huevo. And <laughs> no, it's not very popular, right? But yeah, I understand. But sad at the same time. Okay. Uh, well, so students complain that life is too hard, that we have to study a lot, and we have a lot of homework, and we don't have time, and classes are difficult, and I want to cry all the time. Well, no worries. I had the same situation when I was a kid. Um, but let me tell you something. Um, Sometimes it's difficult because parents focus on grades. Like you have to get good grades in school, right? Ah, mi muchachita is very smart. You know, she gets good grades. She's, she's the best, you know. She, uh, this girl, you know, doesn't study and I'm having problems with her because uh, it's not about good grades, guys. It's not about good grades. People get good grades and when they are adults, they are not very successful. We feel they, bad for our kids. Yeah, it's not about good grades. It's about learning. It doesn't matter if you get A or B or 80 or 90 or 100. It's about learning, learning, learning. Some people, you know, they get good grades in school, but in real life, they're not successful because it's not about good grades. It's about personality. It's about uh, learning. It's about having the information, knowing and that's what matters, not the, the grades. But parents say, I mean, muchachito is very smart, you know, get good grades in school. It's not about good grades. It's not about good grades. Somebody says she is the best in the class. Well, she got good grades, but that doesn't mean she's the best. He got good grades, but that doesn't mean he's the best. You're the best if you have a lot of knowledge. You're the best if you know how to use that knowledge. If you know about computers, technology, language, math. Mister. Go ahead, Isabella. Can I go to the bathroom, please? Uh, nice, Abel. I thought you were about to give an opinion of what I'm saying, but yeah, thank you for that. Go ahead, go to the bathroom. Sorry, sorry about that. I don't usually check the chat. Go to the bathroom. Okay. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt. Who was Franklin Roosevelt? I don't care, Mr. Johnny, about Franklin Roosevelt. I don't know who he was. I don't want to know who he was. Oh. It's English. Um, we, I want you to teach a little bit about presidents of the United States. So this was a very important president. I mean, you want to tell me who Franklin Delano, Delano Roosevelt was? Franklin Roosevelt was the... 32nd USA president, he faced many challenges. Roosevelt led the nation through to the worst problems of the 1900s. 1900s, they were the Great Depression and World War II. The Roosevelt was elected president for four times. He served uh, longer than any other president. Uh -huh. He became one of the most important presidents in the USA history. Yeah, something very important about history is this. This was the president that has served the longest in office. You know? I think that was like 20 years, something like that. In Honduras, you can't do that. Presidents, I think, can be like well, it used to be four years, but now with the last president, he spent eight years in power. 
But this president, he spent almost 20 years. Was that legal? I don't know if it was legal, but the United States was facing like many problems at that time. Uh, a Great Depression? What do you think is a Great Depression? It's about the, the Great Depression right here. Okay, that was about the economy. No jobs, no money, no food. People were on the streets. People were dying of hunger. They were hungry. Children were hungry. They didn't have food. They didn't have jobs. The economy was terrible. That was the Great Depression. But then the economy improved. Many jobs, a lot of money, plenty of food, houses, cars, everything. But then the second terrible thing. World War II. The United States faced war against Europe in Japan. Germany in Japan. Yeah. What happened later? Okay, what happened in 8082, Isabella? Um um, 8082 on January 3, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was born in Hyde Park, New York. Yeah. On January 30th, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was born in Hyde Park, New York. And what happened in 1905, Victoria? Um, Victoria, in 1905, what happened? On March 17th, mm -hmm. Roosevelt married. Married Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. How old was he when he married Anna? Question How old was he when he married Anna? Come on, guys. You're smart. You know how to add. Have the, have, has the book said his age? Well, he was born in 1882. Oh, he was born in 1882. You know how to count numbers? One, two, three, four, five. So he married Anna in 1905. How old, how old was he? What is the question? My question is how old was Franklin Delano Roosevelt when he married Anna? What was his age? Isabella? Can I drink one? Was govern governor? Excuse me? Was um, elected. My question is, how old was he when he married Anna Eleanor? He married on March, March. On March 17, 1905, yeah. How old, how old was he? Hmm. He was born in 1882. He married in 1905. How old was he? I am too, 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 too much uh, tired for making math. Maybe? No, close, but no. <laughs> if it was 1902, that would be 20 years. But it's not 1902, it's 1905. Yeah. Because 1882 to... Uh, 23. 
Yeah, he was 23 years old. I think he was very young, too young. Okay, what, uh, Amy, what happened in 1921? Roosevelt became ill with polio. Yeah. Polio, now it's not very common. But in the past, it was something very, very harmful. And people got very sick and people might die with polio. Is it, you know, like right now we got COVID and people die. Well, right now people don't die because we have vaccines, right? But before vaccines, before vaccines, people die. And the same thing with polio. We have vaccines for polio now, so we're okay. We're happy. But before vaccines, people die. Yeah. What happened in 1928, uh, Jari? Jari Fuentes? In what? What happened in 1928? Uh, Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Was, what? Roosevelt. Roosevelt was elected governor of New York. So see, like, uh, life bad things happen like he got very sick and almost died because if he got polio in 1921 you almost die but then like seven years later he became the governor of new york which is a great privilege right and so see bad things can happen but also good things can happen what happened in 1933 um samantha on march 4 Roosevelt became the 32nd U.S. president. That was so important. He became the president of the United States. So you become the most powerful man in a country. No, just not in a country, in the world, because the United States is the most powerful country in the world. So if you are the most powerful man in the United States, probably you are the most powerful man in the world. And what happened in 1941, Father? Oh. Para. Uh, Roosevelt become ill with polio. Is it in 1941? On December 7, Japan attacked Pearl. Pearl. Har Harbor. Harbor in Hawaii. The next day, the United States entered World War what? World War Two. Yeah. World what, War Two. And what happened in 1945? Uh, okay. On April, it um twelve. Uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt um, died. Delano De Roosevelt died. So how was he when he died? What? How old was he when he died? His age. How old was he? I insist I'm um, to too to too much. 1882, 1945. What was his age when he died? Forty-five plus eighteen. How much is forty-five plus eighteen? Sixty-three. Okay, John Franklin, help me to read that, Isabella. John Franklin. John Franklin. The Franklin Delano Roosevelt was born on January 3rd, 1882, in Hyde Park, New York. His parents were named James and Sarah. When Franklin was 12, 14, he left home to go to school in Massachusetts. 
Yeah. Where did he go to school? Huh? Where did he go to school? In Massa, Massachusetts. 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 How old was he when he left for school? Fourteen. That's fourteen. Yeah. For these guys, James Roosevelt. Okay, what about college life, uh, Victoria? College life. After finishing school, Roosevelt after went. After finishing. Uh, after finishing school, Roosevelt went to college in Cambridge, Cambridge. Ma Massachusetts. Hmm? And there he studied history, economy. History, history. History, economics, and economics. science. History, economics, and science. And economics and science. Then in 1904, 1904, Roosevelt began law school in New York City, New York, on March uh, 17, 1905. Mm -hmm. He married Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. She mm -hmm. went by Eleanor President. The other Roosevelt was her uncle. Yeah, so that was another very famous president. Uh, it was called Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt. The other Roosevelt, and people call it Teddy Roosevelt. That was her uncle. Okay. So this is interesting and creepy at the same time. Can somebody read this? Did you know? Uh, did you know? Roosevelt and... And Eleanor? Roosevelt and... Roswell and Eleanor were fifth cousins. So they got married and they were cousins. Oh, that's not good. Uh, uh, well, they were fifth cousins. It's not like they were first cousins, right? Or second cousins. They were fifth cousins. It's like, in some way we're related. Okay. So can you help me to read this, please? What is a fifth cousin, by the way? I don't know. Maybe your great grandparent uh, got somebody there, and you know, maybe uh, you and, and Michelle, you are fifth cousins, you know, because your last name is Salazar, right, Michelle? Yes. And Jorge is Salazar. So maybe you have like a great, great grand grandpa, you know, like is the same for the two of you, you know, so maybe you are great, great cousins, you know, who, who knows? Okay, the Roosevelt's, what about the Roosevelt's? The Roosevelt's had six children, but one son died as a baby. That's very sad. How many children they have? Uh, six. What happened with them? One of the babies. He died. He died. How? As doesn't, a baby. As a baby, right? But doesn't say much, right? How he died. Okay, <laughs> so we are learning about somebody. Who are we learning about? Roosevelt. Roosevelt. What is his full name? What is his full name? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And who was Franklin Delano Roosevelt? A president of the United States. He was the 32nd president of the United States. And he had two important events and difficult events to face. Do you remember the two events that he had to face? Mm -hmm. He had two very difficult situations to face in his presence. The Great Depression. The, the Great World Depression and World War II, yes. So we're going to keep learning about him maybe on Monday, maybe maybe on Tuesday or maybe Wednesday. Who knows? Uh, guys, guys, you got to read. If you want to be better, you got to read. Yeah. See you tomorrow, guys.
Monday, 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 not tomorrow. Monday. Okay. Okay. Bye, mister. Bye, Sarela. I'm drinking water and tea. Okay. También coma bien, o si no, no, tampoco, si no, tampoco se va a curar rápido. También coma bien, coma bien. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Coma saludable también. Ok, thank you. Bye. Y tomen medicinas. Uy. Thank you. Rupax. Rupax, funciona mucho. Eso le dieron a mi hermano y en unos días rápido se curó. Ok, Rupax. I have it. Rupax. Funciona. I have Rupax. it, thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Hello, Owen. Hi, Ever. Hi. Okay, vamos a comenzar entonces. Pay attention. Linking sounds. Does she and does he? Sometimes we blend words together when we speak. Listen to the way we blend does she and does he. When we blend does she, we say does she. We blend the sounds together. When we blend the sounds in does she, we do not say the z sound in does. Listen to the way we blend the sounds together. Does she? Does she? Does she? Listen to these examples with does she. Does she like rock music? Does she like rock music? Does she like rock music? Does she work in an office? Does she work in an office? Does she work in an office? Where does she work? Where does she work? Where does she work? We also blend the sounds in does he. When we blend does he, we say does he. Does he. We blend the sounds together. Does he. When we blend the sounds in does he, we do not say the huh sound in he. Does he. Listen to the way we blend the sounds together. Does he. Does he. Listen to these examples with does he. Does he have any does brothers? He. Does he have any brothers? Does he have any brothers? What does he do? What does he do? What does he do? Does he come from a large family? Does he come from a large family? Now, listen and repeat. Click on pause after each question. Does she like rock music? Does she like rock music? Does she? Does she? Does she? Does she? Does she like rock music? Does she work in an office? Does she work in an office? Where does she work? Where does she? Where does she work? Does he have any brothers? Does he? Does he? Does he? Does he have any brothers? Does he have any brothers? What does he do? What does he do? What does he do? What does he do? Does he come from a large family? Does he come from a large family? The. The word the has two pronunciations, the and the. The bananas, the apples. We say the before a consonant sound. The bananas, the salad. We say the with bananas and salad because bananas and salad begin with consonant sounds. We say the before a vowel sound. 
The vowel letters A, E, I, O, and U usually spell vowel sounds. The apples. The entree. We say the with apples and entree because apples and entree begin with vowel sounds. Listen to these examples with the. The cookies. The cookies. The butter. The butter. The morning. The morning. The restaurant. The restaurant. Listen to these examples with the. The ice cream. The ice cream. The oil. The oil. The evening. The evening. The Italian restaurant. The Italian restaurant. Now listen and repeat. Click on pause after each phrase. The cookies. The cookies. The ice cream. The ice cream. The butter. The butter. The oil. The oil. The morning. The morning. The evening. The evening. The restaurant. The restaurant. The Italian restaurant. The Italian restaurant. That's your cousin Teddy. He's a waiter. He's single. And he likes rock music. It's my brother, Eddie. He's a doctor. He's got a wife and two kids, and he likes classical music. How about this one? I don't know. A cousin? No. Your brother? No! An uncle? It's my Aunt Judy. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Morris. She looks like your uncle. Tell me something about her. She's an architect. Artist. Married. Divorced. Two kids. Three kids. Four ki Five kids? No kids! <laughs> Only eight more. Here's an easy one. I don't know. It's my father! I know who your father is. Why are you showing me photos of your father? My family is coming in one hour. Now pay attention. Why do you have such a large family? It's not that large. Not that large! You have six brothers and sisters, 14 aunts and uncles. Who knows how many cousins, nieces, and nephews? I'd say that's a large family. They're not all coming over. No, just 18 of them. I'm sorry, honey. I just want them to like you. Calm down. It's okay. You're doing fine. Okay. I'm okay. Your cousin John? Oh! <laughs> Okay. That's your sister's husband, Ernie. They live on Park Street. Two kids! Elizabeth is 12 years old, and Katie is eight. <laughs> Ernie's an architect. He likes Baseball, basketball, and the movies. Wow. One more. <laughs> Your nephew, David. His nickname is Dave. <laughs> he lives on King Street. He's single, and he's a student. He loves to travel. 
He likes jazz and he doesn't like fish. You're amazing. Very nice. Oh, it's almost six. Bob, would you wipe off the counter? I'll be in the bathroom for a while. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Come on in. OK, guys. Hey guys. Ok, tenemos que hacer esta pregunta entonces. Tenemos que colocar aquí el auxiliar. ¿Cuál sería? Para your cousin. Dos. Dos. What does your cousin? Um, watch. Friday evening. He watches. Soccer, okay. How many aunts and uncles? ¿Cuál sería la pregunta? ¿Tienes tú? ¿Cómo sería tienes tú? Auxiliar. Auxiliar. How many aunts and uncles? Auxiliar, ¿cuál sería? How many uncles? How ¿Cuál es el auxilio? Do. 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 ¿Cuál es el sujeto? Do. ¿Cuál es el verbo? Ha. ¿Alguien quiere leer la pregunta? How many aunts and do you have? ¿Qué dice en español? How many aunts and uncles do you have? ¿Cuántos? ¿Cuántas tías y tíos tienes? Ok. ¿Que alguien quiere dar la respuesta, por favor? Eh, I have. I have three aunts and two uncles. ¿Alguien que me lo diga en español? Yo tengo tres tíos y dos tías. Mm. Tres días y dos días. Tres días y dos días, ¿no? Perdón. Ok. 
¿Cuál sería la pregunta? ¿Cuál sería? Do. Ok, sujeto. Do. Sujeto. When do you. Verbo. Ah. No, sería bueno. When do you do? When do you do your When do you do your homework? ¿Qué significa? When do you do your homework? ¿Qué significa? Cuando haces la tarea. Cuando haces la tarea. Muy bien. ¿Cuál es la respuesta? I do my Me? homework after dinner. Yo? I do my homework after dinner. ¿Qué significa? Yo hago la tarea después de la Okay. Dice, <laughs> my in-laws, they live down the street. Okay. Entonces, son my in-laws. Entonces, la pregunta es, ¿dónde viven ellos? ¿Cómo sería? Sería, where... Do... They... Where do you live? No, they... Where do they live? Where do they live? Bueno, ya está el signo de pregunta. ¿no? They live down the street. Viven eh, bajando la calle. ¿no? Dice stepsister. Ok, estamos hablando de ella. What those? Sería what those? She, she has do. do. Well, alguien me puede leer la oración, por favor. What does she do at the park every morning? What does she do at the park every morning? ¿Qué significa? What does she do at the park every morning? En el... ¿Qué hace ella en el parque? Cada mañana. Cada mañana. Uh, cada mañana. Ella va a qué? Correr. Ella va a correr. She goes run. She goes run. Mire cómo le agrega S el verbo. Oración afirmativa. Ok. Uh, she calls her twin sister Sara. Pregunta. Ok. Who does, does. She. 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 ¿Cuál es el she verbo? Do. Verbo. Ah. Uh, how. how. ¿Qué dice la pregunta entonces? ¿A quién llamó a ella cada día? Ok, léame en inglés aquí. She called her twin sister, Sara. Uh -huh. ¿Qué significa la palabra twin? Anótela. Twin, ella... twin significa gemelo o gemela. Uh -huh. Twin, gemelo o gemela. ¿Alguien me lee en inglés? ¿Y luego en español? Ella llama a su hermana gemela. Sí. Primero en inglés o en español. She calls her twin sister Sara. ¿Alguien? She calls her twin sister Sara. ¿Spanish? Ella llama a su hermana gemela Sara. Entonces, twin sister. ¿Qué significa twin sister? Hermana gemela. ¿Y qué significa half brother? No sé. Bueno, anótelo entonces. No veo a nadie anotando. Deberíamos estar anotando esas tipo de cosas. No se pronuncia la L, solo, la, solo se pronuncia la H, una J, la A y la F. Half. Half. Half significa la mitad. ¿Qué significa half brother entonces? Si half es la mitad. Medio hermano. Medio hermano, eso es half brother. También puede tener half sister, ¿no?
Bueno, dice, lo visito dos veces al mes. Entonces, ¿cuál sería la pregunta? ¿Cuándo visito? Oh. Bueno, como dice yo. I, yo asumo que la pregunta debe ser you, ¿verdad? Ah, sí, yo. Entonces sería do, do. Do, do. Do, do. Con you. Do, do. Do, do. do you. Visit. How often do you visit your half brother? I'm visiting twice a month. ¿Que okay, alguien me lea aquí? How often do you visit your half, half, half brother? Half brother. How often significa que tan seguido o que tan a menudo. Mm -hmm. ¿Qué dice en español? ¿Qué tanto visitas a tu medio hermano? ¿Qué tan seguido visitas a tu medio hermano? Mm -hmm. Si alguien me llega a leer aquí, ¿no? en inglés. I visit him, eh, no sé esa palabra. Twice. 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 Ok, twice significa dos veces. Twice. Twice. Yo lo visito dos veces al mes. Okay. Aprende estas palabras, muy útiles, ¿eh? Once, twice. Once. Yo le dije que no se complique con la W, solo trátela como que si fuera una U. Twice. 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 T-Wise, no, no es T-Wise, es Twice. Como si fuera una hora. Okay. Uh, la última entonces. Dice for your grandmother. My mother does. She cooks dinner for her every day. Entonces sería para. Mi mamá lo hace. Dice. Ella, she cooks dinner for her every day. Entonces, vamos a decir para quién cocina mi, tu madre. Entonces sería, ¿cuál es la auxiliar? Dos. Dos. Eh, vamos a usar eh, oh, eh, no. ¿Qué sujeto? Para ella. Uh, sí. Espérate, vamos a ver, dice, 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 who for your grandma. Es que Sería do. No, aquí no necesitamos, porque aquí, mira, lo que tenemos, único, ¿cuál es la pregunta que tenemos que decir aquí? No necesitamos, porque aquí no tenemos sujeto, aquí lo que andamos buscando es el sujeto. ¿Qué dice esa pregunta? Para aquí. ¿Qué dice? ¿Quién cocina para tu madre? La respuesta es My mother Mi madre, madre lo hace. Lo hace. Ella cocina ¿Cocina ella para ella? Cena. Ella cocina para ella cada día Entonces Aquí no necesita sujeto porque más bien anda buscando el sujeto mm. Por eso no necesita sujeto en esta oración porque lo anda buscando ¿Quién cocina? ¿No? Uh -huh. Muy bien. Entonces vamos a hacer otra actividad. Ok, ¿cuál sería la... la? Aquí. Nieces en nephews. She has two nieces and five nephews. ¿Cómo, cómo haría la pregunta? How many? Hace dos. How many niece and nephew? Si alguien me lee la pregunta, por favor. 
many nice nieces, nieces and nephews does she have? ¿Qué significa? ¿Cuántos, ¿Cuántos sobrinas y sobrinas? ¿Cuántos sobrinas y sobrinos? ¿Tiene ella? Tiene ella. A ver si alguien me lee aquí. She has two nieces and five nephews. ¿Qué significa? Ella tiene dos sobrinas y cinco sobrinos. Muy bien. Ok, ¿cuál es la pregunta aquí? He works. Ella trabaja en... Where... Where... Where does... ¿Qué hace su hermana? ¿Dónde trabaja? ¿De verdad ahí? ¿Qué dice? Where does his sister in law work? Ajá, ¿qué significa? ¿Dónde, ¿Dónde trabaja su cuñada? ¿Dónde trabaja su cuñada? Ok, a ver quién me iba a leer. She works at a bank on Smith, Smith Street. Ajá, she works at a bank on Smith Street. ¿Qué significa? Ella trabaja en un banco en la calle Smith. Muy bien. Pregunta, dice, he's an engineer. Entonces, la pregunta sería. What do, dos. Do, he, ¿Qué hace tu hermano? No? Que, okay, ¿Quién la lee? Ah, Ajá. No. ¿Qué lee? What does your brother in law do? What does your brother in law do? ¿Qué significa? ¿Qué hace tu cuñado? ¿Qué hace tu cuñado? ¿Alguien lee? He's an engineer. He's an engineer. He's an engineer. engineer. Spanish? Engineer. Él es in, un ingeniero. Es un ingeniero. Dice, has twin brother. Ok, entonces sería who aquí. Solamente who. ¿Qué iría? Mm. ¿Quién es tu? ¿Qué dice la pregunta? Ah, ¿Quién es? ¿Quién es tu hermano gemelo? ¿Qué significa has? ¿Quién tiene un hermano gemelo? ¿Quién tiene un hermano gemelo? ¿Quién tiene un hermano gemelo? Ajá. All those. El All tiene. All tiene. Ok. Ok. Dice, he studies English at school on Main Street. ¿Cuál es la pregunta? ¿Dónde estoy ahí? Where does do this study? Where does her brother study English? ¿Qué dice la pregunta? ¿Dónde estudia inglés su hermano? ¿Dónde estudia inglés su hermano? Bueno, tienen que darme unos minutitos porque está lloviendo horriblemente aquí. Necesito ponerme audífonos. Solo unos minutitos, ya voy. Deme unos minutitos. Okay. ¿Alguien me puede hablar? Hola. Sí. 
¿Ustedes me escuchan? Sí. Ah, perfecto. Perfecto. Casi siempre he tenido problemas con esta base. Pero no. Ok. Entonces, vamos, dice. ¿Cuál es la pregunta, no? Bueno. No. hermana, inglés no estudias. Inglés primero, luego español. ¿Dónde estudia inglés, hermano? ¿Dónde estudia inglés, hermano? Él estudia inglés. inglés. Él estudia inglés en la escuela de... Main Street, ¿verdad? Ok, mira cómo le agrega ES, ¿verdad? Ok. Ok, entonces mira aquí dice My grandfather does. Entonces cuando dice mi, mi abuelo lo hace, entonces lo que quiere saber es quién es. Entonces, sin uh -huh. seguir, se lo vamos a agregar. Hugo. 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 Como Hugo. Hugo de naranja. Hugo. 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 ¿Qué dice la pregunta? ¿Quién habla cinco idiomas? Ajá. My grandfather. Does. Ok. No necesito usar dos aquí. ¿Cómo voy a usar do or dos si no tengo sujeto? Si no tengo I, you, she, he, he. No tengo sujeto ahí. Entonces no puedes usar do or dos. Más bien en la respuesta te dicen que es el abuelo. Pero más bien tú quieres saber esa respuesta. Who speaks five languages? ¿Quién habla cinco idiomas? My grandfather does. Ok. Dice, lo veo una vez al año. Entonces, ¿cómo dijimos que se decía? ¿Qué tan seguido, qué tan a menudo? How often. Muy bien. Alguien está poniendo atención. How often. Entonces, debes usar el auxiliar. ¿Cuál es el auxiliar? Con you. Do. Do. Muy bien. You. Entonces, abajo puedes ver el verbo. En la oración B de la número 7 puedes ver el verbo. ¿Cuál es el verbo? Sí. 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 Ok. Mira qué rara está esta pregunta. ¿Qué dice? Mm. ¿Qué tan seguido? ¿Qué tan seguido tú ves a, a tu ex esposo? A tu ex -esposo. <risas> qué raro, ¿no? Qué raro. ¿Qué tan seguido miras a tu ex esposo? Se da vacaciones una vez al año, dice la esposa. Para ver a la esposa. How often do you see your ex husband? ¿Lo veo? Una vez al año. Una vez al año. Once a year. I see him once a year. Ok. Y la última dice... They watch after dinner. Entonces, ¿qué, qué queremos saber? Tiempo, ¿no? ¿Cuál es el question word? Después de la cena. ¿Cuál es el question word? Have. When. ¿Cuál es el de la ciudad? When do. Do. They. ¿Cuál es el verbo? Watch. Watch. ¿Qué dice la pregunta entonces? Cuando es... Inglés, primero. Cuando ellos ven... Uh -huh. When do they watch the news on TV? Uh -huh. Spanish. Cuando ellos ven las noticias. Y en la tele, ¿cuándo la ven? They watch after dinner. Ajá, ¿qué dice? Ellos la ven después de la cena. La ven después de la cena, muy bien, esas son las preguntas. Ok, entonces quería ponerle un poquito complicadas las preguntas, pues, porque primero si vamos con lo difícil, lo demás se hace fácil. Vaya, pues entonces ayúdeme a completar aquí en este ejercicio. Ya hicimos los ejercicios de práctica. Vamos a preguntarle a Kaylee, ¿qué va aquí? She lives in Dublin, dice la respuesta. ¿Qué debería ir aquí? Dublin. Where, where do, where, where do your sister live? Ok, léela de nuevo y me decís la respuesta. Where do your sister live? She uh -huh. lives in Dublin. In Dublin, Dublin. Dublin. Por cierto, ¿vos sabés Dublin la capital de qué país es? Bueno, se llama Ireland, Irlanda, no Dublin, Irlanda, la capital. Ok, Debo, regálame la número dos. Mira la respuesta. Three, my sister. Tres, my sister. Ahí está un poco difícil. Claro. Mm. Eh, how many? How many? Sí. 
you so have? A, how many nieces and nephews? ¿Cuál es el auxiliar? Eh, do. Ajá, ¿y cuál es el sujeto? Have. ¿Es el sujeto? Es el verbo. Mm, no sé. <ríe> do. Do. Mm. Lee la oración entonces. Eh, how many knees and nephews do nieces. you have? Nieces. Nieces. How many nieces and nephews do you have? ¿Qué significa? ¿Cuánto, cuánta, ¿Cuántas? ¿Cuántas sobrinas y sobrinos tienes? ¿Tienes? Uh -huh. Tres. Tres. Three. My sister. Uh -huh. Two girls. ¿Pero qué dice? Four. ¿Cómo se dice tiene? Mi hermana tiene. Mi, ah. my sister has has, ¿verdad? recordad que para she es has no puedes usar uh -huh. have porque es has Ajá. my sister has to be. and my brother has ¿qué significa? both ¿qué significa both? anótela pues, anótela si no la sabes uh -huh. ambos o ambas ambos o ambas Tiene... entonces, seguí leyendo entonces Ajá. Mi hermana tiene. Mi hermana tiene dos niñas. Ajá. Seguí leyendo. Ambas. Ambas adoptadas. Ambas adoptadas. Y my brother. Y, y mi hermano. ¿Qué va ahí? Has. Has a stepson. Ajá, stepson. Bueno, entonces puedes ponerle esta palabra step con son y con Ajá. daughter. Ajá. Eso significa hijastro. Ajá. Si es un stepfather, es un padrastro. Si es un stepmother, es un madrastra. Si es un stepson, es un hijastro. O sea que no es hijo tuyo de sangre, sino que es hijo de tu pareja, pero no es hijo tuyo. Uh -huh. Ok, mira, entonces la respuesta dice, esto está fácil, Denise. Dice, stay with when you visit. ¿Con quién te quedas cuando, cuando visitas Los Ángeles? ¿Cuál es el, 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 el question word? ¿Con quién o quién? ¿Tenis? What? ¿Tenis? ¿Cuál es el, el question word? ¿Quién o con quién? Bueno, yo se los anoté ahí, ¿verdad? Hasta le hice una cancioncita, que eran los cinco, los five, five W's. ¿Cómo dice quién? Wow. Wow. Mm, como que digas jugo de naranja. Jugo. 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 No, es, no es gu, ¿verdad? Ni, ni wo, ni es ju. Ju. Pues solo recordate de jugo. ¿Ya? Yeah. Ok. Si la respuesta es yo... ¿Cuál debió ser, de haber sido el sujeto para la pregunta? Pues tú. Si yo te pregunto tú tal cosa, tú dices yo la respuesta, ¿no? Ok, pero antes del sujeto, eh, tenés el, el auxiliar. ¿Cuál es el auxiliar para you? Entonces, este es el orden. Mira, te repito. Question word, auxiliar y sujeto. Question word, auxiliar y sujeto. Help me, please. <laughs> A los Help compañeros. <laughs> ok, ¿cuál es el question word? Who. ¿Cuál es el auxiliar? Do. Um, ¿Cuál es el sujeto? You. You. Mm. Ok, el verbo stay es quedarse. Stay es quedarse. ¿Qué dice la pregunta entonces? Nice. ¿Con quién? ¿Con quién? ¿Con quién te, te quedas cuando visitas Los Ángeles? Sí, ¿con quién te quedas cuando visitas Los Ángeles? Pues, ¿Cuál es la respuesta? ¿El qué? With Gwen. ¿With? 
es con. Con. Uh -huh. ¿Con quién te quedas? Uh -huh. Ay. When. When es cuando. Ah. Cuando tú visitas Los Ángeles. Ok, ¿cuál es la respuesta entonces? I stay with uh -huh. I stay. I stay with my aunt. Stay with my aunt and uncle. Stay with my aunt and uncle. Aquí que debería ir, pues yo me quedo. Yo me quedo. I stay, I stay, I stay with stay. my aunt and stay. uncle. No. Bueno, estos son, son problemas reto. Eh, no espero que la contestes a la primera. Estamos iniciando. Eh, solo quiero que tratemos de abrir un poquito la mente, ¿no? De ponernos desafíos, desafíos, un poquito de desafíos. ¿no? Who do you stay when you visit Los Ángeles? ¿O quién te quedas cuando visitas Los Ángeles? Me quedo con mi tía y mi tío. Ok, vamos entonces a nuestro libro. Te leo entonces. Busy people. Listen. Jeff is a very athletic person. He does a different kind of exercise or sport every day. On Monday, he jogs. On Tuesday, he plays tennis. On Wednesday, he does yoga. On Thursday, he swims. On Friday, he goes to a health club. On Saturday, he plays basketball. And on Sunday, he rides his bike. Julie is a very busy student. She does a different activity every day. On Monday, she sings in the choir. On Tuesday, she plays in the orchestra. On Wednesday, she writes for the school newspaper. On Thursday, she plays volleyball. On Friday, she babysits for her neighbors. On Saturday, she works at the mall. And on Sunday, she visits her grandparents. Mr. and Mrs. Baker are very active people. They do something different every day of the week. On Monday, they go to a museum. On Tuesday, they see a play. On Wednesday, they go to a concert. On Thursday, they take a karate lesson. On Friday, they go dancing. On Saturday, they see a movie. And on Sunday, they play cards with their friends. Okay, question, Kaylee. What does Jeff do on Thursday? What does Jeff do on Thursday, Kaylee? Será que perdimos a Kaylee? Okay, Dennis, what does Jeff do on Thursday? Me, me preguntas que si qué hace Jeff el, 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 el Thursday. Yes. Uh, on Thursday, he swing. Thank you. Ronaldo, what does Julie do on Friday? What does Julie do on Friday? Microphone apagado, Ronaldo. 
on Friday, on, on Friday, she babysit for her neighbors. Thank you. Johanna, what do Mr. and Mrs. K? Mr. and Mrs. Baker do on Saturday? Saturday. On Saturday, they see a movie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, question, uh, Owen. Does Jeff play tennis on Tuesday? Yes, he does. Julia, does Julie work at the mall on Saturday? Yes, she does. Okay, Mayra, do Mr. and Mrs. Baker go dancing on Friday? Micrófono apagado, Mayra. Usted le escucha a Mayra porque yo no. ¿Me escucha? Si alguien me puede dar feedback de que solo yo no la estoy escuchando o ustedes sí la escuchan. Se escucha Se poco. Escucha bien bajo. Escucha, pero poco. Entiendo bueno, poco. ahora creo que yo soy el que tengo el problema. ¿Me escucha? Un segundo, pues. Ok, ¿ahora sí me escuchan? Sí. Yes. Ok, Mayra, ¿do Mr. and Mrs. Baker go dancing on Friday? Bueno, aquí está la respuesta, mira. Oh. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Thank you. Okay, uh, Deborah, does Jeff do yoga on Sunday? No, he doesn't. Entonces quiero que ahora me hagas la pregunta, ¿cuándo hace yoga Jeff? ¿Cuándo? ¿Cómo se dice cuándo? No, when, when oh. does Jeff do yoga. Uh -huh. Ahora, como ya hablamos de Jeff, no necesitas decir Jeff, sino que solo he, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh -huh. quiero que me preguntas cuándo hace yoga Jeff. When does he do yoga. Ok, creo que era on Wednesday, ¿verdad? Revise ahí en su libro. So he does yoga on Wednesday, right? ¿Estoy equivocado o no? Wednesday. Wednesday. Sí. Ok, todos pilas con el libro ahí entonces. A ver, Kaylee, pregúntale a Johanna la siguiente. Um, when do he... No, la siguiente que está ahí a la par. ¿eh? Bueno, a ver. Hey, Julie. And um, Julia sing in the church choir on Thursday? Uh -huh. no. Does Julie sing in the choir on Thursday? No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Ahora entonces hacerle la pregunta cuando canta en el coro entonces. When do you when do you de Julia? When do she do what con she? Perdón. Do y she van juntos. Bueno, es que para hacer preguntas con she usamos those, por eso lo digo. Elia, when those sin do sin do. Um, vamos a hacerlo en orden. ¿Cuál es el question word? Okay. When? ¿Cuál es el auxiliar? Dos. ¿Cuál es el sujeto? Julie. Uh, Estamos hablando de Julie. ¿Perdón? Estamos hablando Pero... de Julie. ¿Cuál es el sujeto? 
Sí. Ok, comencemos nuevamente. Ok. Question word. Eh, when. Eh, auxiliar. Those. Sujeto. Sí. Verbo. Think. Ok, y el complemento sería en el coro. When do... Ya me olvidó. When do she sing choir? In the choir. In the choir. So, toda la pregunta es, when does she sing in the choir? When does she sing in the choir? When, when does she sing in the choir? In the choir. Does she sing in the choir? Bueno, yo creo que es on Monday. ¿No? Yes. Julie sings in the choir on Monday. Is it true? Yes. Ok. Entonces, respóndele. Entonces, este es el proceso que vamos a hacer ahorita. Lo repetimos, Kaylee. Primero le preguntas, ¿eh, ¿Julie canta en el coro el, el jueves? No, no lo hace. Pues, cuando canta en el coro ella? Ah, ella canta en el coro los lunes. En serio, ah, no. Hágalo, pues. De nuevo, ok. Uh, a ver si lo digo bien. Sería, yeah. when do... No, va a do... proceso. A, B, luego A, B. Comienza como está ahí. O sea, no Primero sé si... Con la, misma que te comencé. La, conversación va, la conversación va así, mira. Eh, Julie canta en el coro el, jue, el jueves. Entonces, Johanna te dice, no, ella no canta el jueves. Entonces, tú le preguntas, ¿cuándo canta Julie? Ah, ella canta el lunes, le dice. Son dos preguntas y dos respuestas. Mira, tú, ¿no Julie sing in the choir on Thursday? No, she doesn't. Eh, when does she sing in the choir? Uh, she sings in the choir on Monday. Muy bien, she sings con S, ¿no? Agrega S el verbo. She sings in the choir on Monday. Muy bien, interesante. Ok, ahora vamos a ver, eh, Ronaldo, no, okay. si, si le preguntas a Julia. Do Mr. and Mrs. Baker see a movie on Monday? Sí, le estás preguntando si el señor y la señora Baker ven la película lo, los lunes. Micrófono apagado. No, they don't. Entonces, Julia le dice, no, no lo hacen. Entonces, no, tu próxima no, pregunta, no. Ronaldo, debe ser es, ¿cuándo ven una película a ellos? When, when do, do, sujeto, they, they, uh -huh. they verbo, sí, ajá, a movie, sí, a movie, hasta ahí, movie. hasta ahí, de nuevo, hasta ahí, ¿lo hiciste bien? When bueno. do, when do they see a movie? Muy bien, when do they see a movie? When do they see a movie? ¿Cuándo ven la película? Sería day. Quiero ver cuándo la ven. Sí, a movie on Tuesday. Creo que es Friday, ¿no? On Saturday. On Saturday. Sería. Eh, sería day. Eh, movies. They see a movie. They see a movies eh, on Saturday. Bueno, ahora quiero que sea más fluida esta conversación. Repitámoslo. Ronaldo lo hizo bien, Julia lo hizo bien, pero así muy trabado. Que sea un poco más fluido esto. De nuevo, Ronald. When do they no, comienza desde la primera pregunta para que se haga una conversación uh, fluida. Do Mr. and Mrs. Becker see a movie on Monday? No, they don't. Uh, when do they see a movie? They, they see a movie uh, on, on Saturday. Eso estuvo mejor. They see a movie on Saturday. Ok. ¿Quién me iba a leer aquí? Repito. ¿eh? Débora y Mayra. Débora pregunta, Mayra responde rápido. Do you play volleyball? No, on aquí Sunday? no estoy señalando yo. Ok. Do you swing on Thursday? Mayra. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Siguiente pregunta, Mayra. Se la hace a Owen. Aquí ve. Uh -huh. 
No, I don't. Siguiente pregunta, Owen. Se la hace a Johanna. Um, do you go dancing on Friday? Yes, we do. Johanna, la siguiente pregunta se la hace a Denis. Uh -huh. Do you see a play on Monday? Denis? No, we don't. No, we don't. Do you swim on Thursday? Yes, I do. Do you play volleyball on Sunday? No, I don't. Do you go dancing on Friday? Yes, we do. Quiero que me haga la siguiente pregunta. Vamos a desafiar a Ronaldo. Ronaldo lo he visto yo. Pregúnteme, Ronaldo, si yo como pollo en el desayuno. <laughs> Ahí es donde son palabras que usted conoce, son palabras que usted conoce, la estructura que usted conoce. Johnny, ¿cómo es pollo en el desayuno? Eh, do you? Do you, verbo. Do you eat? Eat. Eat. eat chicken. Chicken. Uh -huh. eh, in sería. Sería for. Para el desayuno. For, for breakfast. Muy bien, bien hecho. De nuevo la pregunta. Ay. <laughs> do you do you hit? No es hit, I es e. Do you e, e, do eat? You, do you hit? Do you eat chicken for breakfast? No, I don't. No, I don't. Ahora pregúnteme cuándo comes pollo, entonces. When, when those, ¿por qué those? Si estamos con you, those solo es para she o he. Uh, when do, when do, uh, 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 eat, eat chicken, eat chicken. Nuevo? Recuerda que es question when word, do, auxiliar, sujeto y verbo. When do, uh -huh. hit, no. Te está saltando del sujeto al, al verbo. It es el verbo. Te falta el sujeto. El sujeto es when you. Do, when, when do you hit chicken? No se dice hit. Solo se dice como una I. It. it. Hazlo de nuevo. Todo. Todo. Do you eat? Do you eat chicken for uh, breakfast? No, I don't. When, when do you eat chicken? I eat chicken at lunch. En el almuerzo. I eat chicken at lunch. Mira. Yeah. Ahí vamos. Ahí vamos desafiándonos poquito a poco. I eat chicken at lunch. Ok. Uh, seguimos. Pues. Sigamos. Uh, ya que estamos en esto quiero que nos probemos en grammar ahorita ok, ¿quién me ayuda a hacer la primera pregunta? Do you hunt your wife like Italian food? ¿Cuál es la respuesta? Yes, we we those. ¿Por qué do? Si, si do solamente es para we, she and he. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Recuerda que lo que va en la pregunta va en la respuesta. Si hizo pregunta con do, la respuesta va con do. Ok, de nuevo la pregunta, Ronaldo. Do you hand your wife like Italian food? Yes, we do. Spanish? Español? Uh, 
Tú y tú. Les, les gusta a ti y a tu esposa. Les gusta a ti y a tu esposa la comida italiana. Uh -huh. Entonces ella dice, sí y nos gusta. Nosotros. Sí nos gusta, sí. esa es la respuesta, sí nos gusta. Ok, a ver Kelly, number two. Do, do your brother work on the mall? Uh -huh. Yes, he do. Yes, does he your does. brother work at the mall? Yes, he does. ¿Qué significa? Um, tu hermano trabaja en el mall. Sí, el... Correcto. Cuidadito aquí con confundir your con you, ¿no? No se me vaya a confundir con eso. No se me vaya a confundir con eso. ¿Cómo me has hecho así? No se me vaya a confundir con eso. Aquí no dice you. Dice your brother. Your brother, el sujeto es él. La gente se confunde you y your. You y your son cosas diferentes. You sí va acompañado de do. Pero aquí lo que dice es your brother. O sea, el pronombre él. ¿Qué dice la en español? Trabaja. Tu hermano trabaja. Tu hermano tra trabaja en el mall. Y... No, eso es una afirmación. Si quieres hacer una pregunta, primero dices el verbo. Tu hermano. Trabaja tu hermano. Tu hermano. Me refiero en español. Primero tienes que decir, trabaja tu hermano en el mall. Porque si tú dices, tu hermano trabaja en el mall, eso no es una pregunta, eso es una afirmación. Bueno, tenemos que aprender español también. Entonces, sí, sí lo hace, ¿no? Y así dos, sí lo hace. Ok, number three, Johanna. Do you play, amigos? Johanna. ¿Tú juegas? Ahorita. Sería la, la, la tercera, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. um, do, do your friends play card? Uh -huh. No, they, they don't. Ajá, ¿qué dice en español? Que si su, y sus amigos juegan cartas y dice que no, que ellos no lo hacen. No lo hacen, muy bien. ¿Juegan cartas tus amigos? No, no lo hacen. Ok, Dennis, número 5. Do you play a musical instrument? Yes. Do, do, sería, do you play? Número 5, número 5, número 5. Ah, la 5. Does your sister. Does your sister take karate lesson? Practica. Y está la negativa, mira. No, no, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Uh -huh. Does your sister take her other lessons? No, she doesn't. ¿Qué dice en español? Uh -huh. Toma a tu hermana. Uh -huh. Clases de karate. Lecciones de karate. No, no lo hacen. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. Ok, a ver, Débora, seguís con la número 6. Débora, ¿me escuchaste? Sí. ¿Por qué te está costando tanto? ¿Qué auxiliar necesitas para el, para el sujeto A? Do. Do, bueno. Do I ask a lot of questions? Uh -huh. Yes, you do. Uh -huh. ¿Qué dice la pregunta? As es preguntar. Uh -huh. Pregunta. A lot es demasiadas o bastantes. Pregunta, haces muchas preguntas. Ajá. Hago muchas preguntas. Okay. Hago muchas preguntas. Sí, tú haces muchas. Sí, tú haces. Ok, a ver, Kaylee, número 7. 
preguntar. Do. Uh -huh. Do you and es un poco malo el internet así que. Do you and your husband play golf? Uh -huh. No. No. Y he, he don't. Bueno. Como te hago esta pregunta, Kelly, si yo te la hiciera, tú y tu esposo, Kelly, ¿qué vas a responder? We. We, correcto. Entonces sería. No, we don't. No, we don't. Ok, mm -hmm. muy bien. Julia, number eight. Do you... Uh, those, sí. those is those your Google speak French. Correcto. Uh, sería no he, he doesn't. No he doesn't. Correcto. Usamos those porque aquí esto no es you, verdad? Esto es your uncle. Cuando hablamos de tu tío hablamos de él. Entonces él usa el auxiliar those, ¿verdad? Entonces no he doesn't. Habla tu tío francés. No, no lo hace. A ver, number nine, Owen. Uh, do your neighborhood make a lot of noise? ¿Tus vecinos hacen mucho ruido? Um, yes, they... Yes, they are. So, um, ¿Y are de dónde salió? Are lo dejamos en el primer nivel. A mí sí, quedó en el primer nivel. Ahorita no estamos... Ah, yes, they, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Ok, number 10, Ronaldo. Eh, sería... Does your daughter speak Chinese? Muy bien, porque estamos hablando de la hija. La hija es ella, she. Por eso usamos yes. dos. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Muy bien, Ronaldo. Si en la pregunta va do, usted usa do en la respuesta. Si en la pregunta va dos, use dos en la respuesta. Ya casi terminamos. Yo sé que ya estamos tarde. No, no. Facilito, solo póngale don't or doesn't. Mire qué sencillo. La vida nunca había sido tan fácil. Mayra, don't or doesn't, la número 11. No. Don't or doesn't. Léame la oración, por favor. Muy bien. I don't work on Sunday. ¿Qué significa? I don't work on Sunday. ¿Qué significa en español? Yo no trabajo los domingos. No trabajo el domingo. Muy bien. No trabajo el domingo. Siguiente, Johanna. Number 12. My husband doesn't play tennis. Uh -huh. ¿Qué significa? Mi esposo no juega tenis. Mi esposo no juega tenis. Ok. 13, Julia. Julia, 13. Ok. Sería my parents um, don't uh -huh. go dancing. My parents don't go dancing. ¿Qué dice la oración? Uh, mis parientes no... Bueno, parents es padres, no parientes. Mi, pa mis padres no, no bailan. No van a bailar. Mis padres no van a bailar. Owen, 14. Uh, my sister... And I, my sister and I, uh, don't sing. No. Mm -hmm. And my sister and I don't sing in the church. In the choir, 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 choir. Correcto. ¿Qué significa? Uh, mi hermana y yo cantamos en el. ¿Cómo que se llama? No oh, cantamos. Sí, claro. no. No cantamos, no cantamos, no cantamos en el coro. No cantamos en el coro, porque estas son negaciones, ¿no? Ok, Dennis, a ver, 15. 
Guay. Micrófono apagado, Denis. No mira TV. My wife don't. Sería don't or doesn't. My wife, my wife, my wife doesn't watch TV. Pero ¿por qué escogiste doesn't? Porque ahorita. Primero que todo, quiero por, saber por, si sabes por, qué significa la palabra wife. Wife, esposa, ¿no? Tu esposa. Cuando hablamos de tu esposa, ¿qué pronombre vas a usar para tu esposa? Ella. 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 Entonces, doesn't, ¿con qué trabaja? Con ella y con él. No olvides eso. Sí. Por eso usas doesn't. De nuevo. My wife doesn't uh, watch TV. ¿Qué significa? Mi esposa eh, no. no mira uh, no. televisión. Mi esposa no mira televisión. Y la última la vas a hacer tú eh, de ahora. You don't like hockey. ¿Qué dice? No te gusta el hockey. No te gusta el hockey. Muy bien. Ok, ya terminamos. Nos pasamos 10 minutos de la clase. Disculpe. Solo quiero preguntarle. ¿Cómo se sintió? ¿Un poquito estresado? Sí. Sí. Bueno, es que ya vamos, a, ya vamos tocando las torcas un poquito, pues. Porque ya necesitamos que usted vaya produciendo, vaya hablando. Yo necesito que esta clase la suba lo antes posible, por favor. Vaya, pues ya está Para, la tengo, no Porque lo okay. primero lo vi un poco complejo. No, no es complejo. ¿Sabes qué pasa? Que estás sí. caminando con los ojos vendados. Si vas caminando con los ojos vendados, te vas a ir a tropezar por todos lados. Entonces, quítate ah. la venda. Te voy a decir cómo no. quitarte la venda. Aprendete la estructura de la oración del question word. ¿Cuál es la estructura? Mira. Question word. ¿Cuál es question word? When, who, what, how many, how much. Eso va primero. Luego sí. aprendete que va el auxiliar. Do or does. Luego aprendete que va el sujeto. ¿Cuál es el sujeto? I, you, she, he, it, they. Y luego va el verbo. Si te aprendes esa estructura en tu mente, te, te fuiste, pues. Question word, auxiliar, sujeto, verbo. Son cuatro cositas. No es complicado. Eso voy a hacer. Mira, question word, auxiliar, sujeto y verbo. Y te fuiste. Y que tenés que, tenés que tener claro que do es para los, los sujetos I, you, they y we. O más fácil aún, aprendete que dos es para she, he, and it. Y, ya. y el resto es do. Perfecto. Eso te fuiste, ¿no? Que dos trabaja con she, he. ¿Verdad? Otra cosa donde la gente suele confundirse es cuando miran your uncle, por ejemplo, que es tu tío. Entonces piensan que ese your es you y que tienen que trabajar con do. Pero no, cuando decimos your es diferente de you, ¿no? Es muy diferente. Y si decimos your uncle, estamos hablando de tu tío. ¿Qué pronombre usa tu tío? Él. Por lo tanto, usas dos. Si es pregunta o dos en siete. Eh, bueno, tranquilos que nos estamos empezando a meter al lado ahorita. ¿Verdad? Tranquilos, tranquilos. ¿verdad? Relájese. Aquí vamos a estar en este, en este. No sé si has visto cuando un carro cae al lado, Denis. Empieza sí. ahí a patinar. Está patinando. Este charco. Empezamos a entrar ahorita, ¿verdad? Empezamos a entrar a patinar, tranquilos. No, 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 no se estresen, ¿verdad? Empezamos ahorita a patinar. Vamos a estar patinando hasta que salgamos. Todos, ¿verdad? Tranquilos. Estudie, pues. See you tomorrow, guys. Bueno, nos vemos primero Dios en Monday, ¿verdad? Tenga buen fin de semana. Ok, thank you. Bye, bye, guys. See you. See you, guys. Bye, bye. bye.